All right, folks, I'm outside getting some lovely vitamin D today. And I would like to say, before this video starts, you might want to go grab a snack or possibly a drink so that you could be here for this video because it's going to be a long one, honey. <music> Greetings, loved ones, and welcome back to my channel. Today, I am going to be doing a land tour with you of our acreage here in Vermont. And I'm also going to be sharing 27 lessons I learned at 27 because this video is going up on my 27th birthday, baby. And speaking of babies, I'm 30 weeks pregnant. So if I get out of breath during this because I'm talking a lot, you know, that's normal. Also, I wanted to film this in anticipation of spring because, well, today is extremely cold, not shocking for Vermont. We're actually gonna get more snow tonight. So I was hoping to film this before that happens. And I figured that it's just probably a good time to show you all of this because everything is still pretty dead and in that phase of like seeding itself back to life for spring. And the views you can kind of see farther into the distance because the trees aren't as filled in with leaves. So that will be to our advantage. But I wanted to say that for a lot of this video, I'm gonna be talking into my phone like this because I'm gonna be in far away places where I need to show you like the greater scope of things. Also, one last disclaimer before we get into this, any of the projects I talk about in this video, landscaping or outdoor wise, land management wise, those are all pretty much not on a timeline unless they are our garden or our orchard, which is going to go back here. Everything else I'm comfortable waiting like years to see to fruition. We're in it for the long haul, baby. Let's go up here and talk about it. Okay, so I think that this is one of the only places that I've filmed at to talk about land plans a couple of months ago, but we basically want to put like a big staircase going up from our driveway, like possibly a stone staircase that separates the two, a garden over here, and then over here we'll do an orchard because this whole patch of land right here is southern facing, like the sun just hits it directly during the day and it's the one place on our property that would get the most light. So that's our plan for this area. Honestly, our property doesn't go too far back from where you can see here with like these giant rocks and things. So I'll kind of take you to like the property line, but first I'll come back to you, share a little lesson. If you hear any rustling in the leaves, it's Rue. She's having a grand old time. Both dogs are outside with me in their sweaters. Lesson number one in this video is don't go dance in the wound. And how I personally interpret this lesson is like, if you have a disagreement with somebody, don't specifically go seek them out after they like go and take space from you or something like that and be like, hey, I just want to talk about this again because <laughs> I just have a lot more thoughts. It's like, sometimes you need to allow a little bit of space and you don't need to dance in the wound let it just like be open for a while before you stitch it closed. There will be time for you to stitch it closed, but for right now, just accept that you need a little time. A lot of our property lines here are divvied off by old stone walls like this one. So honestly, whenever I find a little something like this in the woods, I'm like, okay, I've gone too far, one. Or two, this is just nice to look at. It's very New England and I love it. So <laughs> that's one of the stone walls. And lesson number two for you today is kind of on the same topic as the first lesson with just like, I guess, disagreements with people or if you're a grudge holder watching this, do you want to be right? Or do you want to move on with your life? I think that one speaks for itself. So let's go to location number three. You're going rock climbing, Rue? Okay. Well, speaking of rock walls, this isn't exactly a rock wall. It's more of a rock pile that my husband Finley's been working on for the past few weeks. Every time he goes out on a walk in the woods, he comes back with more rocks and he sorts them into piles and just divvies them up so that we can use them for future landscaping projects, depending on where we want to add a little accent or some drainage rocks as well. Some of these could be used for, but as you can see, there are some really lovely quartz pieces here and there's a lot of quartz on this property. Like when we go deep into the woods, you'll be able to see some really giant chunks Oh my God, they're amazing. And one of the first things that really sold us on this land. So yeah, we have a lot of quartz, a lot of slate, cause this is slate country, baby. Some people have slate roofs up here, which is awesome, but it's very expensive. So we didn't get one of those. We went with the old metal. Anyway, lesson number three that I wanna share with you is that relationships are like handholds to pull you back into life. 
especially when you're in a depression. So reach out to your friends if you're going through something. And if you don't have friends to reach out to, reach out to family. If you don't have family to reach out to, reach out to me, honey, okay? Or the comment section. My, my little buddies in the comments are always really nice. My pig ducky is coming to join this shot, but this is our front yard. It's quite large, but a lot of it is not landscaped, which you will see is pretty consistent throughout this property. Hi, honey. You wanna be in the shot? Really the very minimal landscaping that we have out here is this patch right in front of me in the summertime. It fills up with some beautiful flowers and herbs, but we don't really have any landscaping along the foundation of our house. Around here, and I'm not gonna focus too much on the exterior of the house because that will be a whole other video, but we do wanna put a deck on here so that the doors, the sliding doors in our house actually lead out to somewhere. So that will be a future project out here. Where I am over here, this is our leach field for our septic tank. So that's just a little something for you. The septic is right over here. And then there's a distribution box over here. So we do plan to clear out some trees up until um, I'd say about 10 feet from where I am back here. And that's kind of the plan for right here. Just clear out a little bit so that the roots don't interfere with any of the septic tank. Honestly though, I feel like for this area, I'll probably just end up planting some random like shrubbery and more just pretty landscaping bushes and flowers and stuff like that. But I would really love for kids to just be able to run around in this yard and have a totally wicked time. So we'll see what we end up doing with this other than, you know, adding in a deck. Need a little water break. I'm realizing that a couple of the early lessons in this video are actually from armchair expert and I don't really listen to that podcast anymore but at the time early 2023 I was writing down these when I would listen to the episodes and they would have a good guest on and they would share like a tidbit of knowledge and I'll be like damn you're really speaking some truths you know so this is one that really hit me our stories aren't static they shift over time it's nice to just be able to accept like the person that you were when you were 15 or something isn't the person that you are now I mean duh I think most of you know that we can just kind of let that go and that's fine let's head back into the woods i think it's time all right i'm just now realizing for the first time when standing over here on this wooden platform that this was actually probably the deck that was attached to the house and then rotted and fell away and he probably just tossed it into the woods but it also looks like this giant tree fell down on it somehow some way i don't know what we'll end up doing with this giant piece of wood but it's here and I just wanted to share it with you, honey. Lesson number five is gratefulness is the state that breaks through the cloud. And the cloud to you could be depression or just like self-loathing or, you know, some sad state that you're in. I'm not saying this is the cure for depression. It's just to be grateful. But my partner and I talk about this a lot when we have mental health struggles, like the absolute inability that you feel to be happy and grateful for the things in your life because you're just so focused on how terrible you feel. And it's really a practice, but just getting into a gratitude journaling exercise or speaking to a loved one about the things that you're really happy to have in your life, that can all be really helpful for breaking through the cloud, so to say. Do you guys wanna see my favorite tree? It's over here. Come on up, tiny. Yeah, guys. Just look at this thing, it is massive. So it's not a living tree, but it is a tree that fell over and it's so fantastic. It's covered in a very thick moss and it goes on for a very long period of time all the way over there. And it's actually split into two separate trunks. So you have a couple of options if you wanna climb on here or make some kind of a fort out of it. I don't know what you wanna end up doing. That's your business, but I love this tree. I think that it's really good and I'll probably just leave it here in the woods. Lesson number six. I feel like I learned in that episode of Armchair Expert with Gabor Mate, who is very trauma informed and he speaks a lot about like the shadow being an influence in your life. So this is a quote I believe from that episode, but I could be wrong. The shadow is smart because it's you. So it's gonna say a lot that actually makes sense and explain loudly why you're right not to try. You guys ever get into one of those states where you're like, yeah, 
I don't even think I need to start that project because, well, it's not gonna turn out that great anyway, or something like that. That's your shadow saying that, instead of your light being like, you're gonna make something so fantastic and great, just start it today. You still just focus on the dark side of things or failure or fear. You know, leading with fear is like the shadow's best friend. <laughs> That's just a really good reminder for me sometimes. But let me take you over to our trash pile. Well, it's not our trash pile, it was left here. But I need to show you all sides of this property good and bad. Okay, this is our like stump pile slash trash pile. I don't really know. We did not do this. I assume that the last owner kind of put these trees in various items here because it's not all trees and biodegradable things. I think he put it here as like a means to make a wall so that on the driveway the gravel wouldn't just like dump off into the woods and I think he was making it as kind of like a platform also possibly as like a turnaround point for vehicles because he did have a lot of large vehicles and I assume that those large vehicles helped him pack this wall but there are some things in there like the bottom base of a basketball hoop and like metal poles and just like random things that um shouldn't be there when we moved in we cleaned up a lot of trash on this property and every time i walk in the woods i find a couple of things and shove them in my pocket like this piece of plastic oh what a relevant lesson <laughs> number seven is i don't live with anyone else's mistakes i live with mine Okay, so really all you can do in a case like this, we just repair and we move on, okay? Somebody commented the funniest thing on one of my recent videos and they said, I also want to upcycle a house. And I thought that was so funny and accurate. Like we are upcycling a house because that's what you got to do in this housing market, honey. Sometimes you just got to visit old construction and make it feel brand new again in certain ways. And land management also has some of that as well. That's a good lesson for this whole homeowner process, I would say. Come on. Okay, now my pigs are joining me over here to show you our shitty shed. <laughs> This was left here, it's on a concrete pad, so we could reuse that for, you know, some kind of a foundation on another building in the future, but we do plan to just tear this down. Although right now, because we don't have any outbuildings other than this for storage, as well as the pig's shed. This has been at least helpful in the meantime, just for storing some of our outdoor farm equipment and other various things. I think over here in this area, we may change our minds, but for right now, our plan is to extend the foundation of this shed and make a barn here so that we'll have an even larger place to work with. And it also would be close enough to the house that you could drive our driveway and see it there and access it. Um, and possibly we could do a gravel road kind of further down to the pig shed as well. But these are all just ideas at the moment. Our property doesn't go very far off this direction, literally right behind me. I don't know if you can see it. There's another stone wall, which marks uh, the line to our neighbor's property. Lesson number eight is when you're attached to something, you're not gonna blame anything on it because then you'll lose your coping mechanism. <laughs> this one reads me to filth sometimes, honey, when I'm really dependent on something. Let's just interpret this as like substance specifically. I mean, I'm 30 weeks pregnant. I've been stone cold sabre since the end of August, okay? But let's just, for the sake of this interpretation, use that as an example. But obviously you could kind of take that more broadly and interpret it out to literally any coping mechanism in your life. <laughs> Okay, Peach, do you wanna go show them your house? All right, welcome to our pig pen. So our two pigs, Ducky and Peach, they live in here in this little wooden house that's inside of a metal shed. Speaking of metal, there's a bunch of metal sheets that line their pen and these are all old 
pieces of our roof because we got our roof replaced on this house in November and they left, we asked them to leave all of the old roofing behind so that we could upcycle it. And now it's a pig pen. So that's really great. Finley used some logs to kind of secure the perimeter as well, but they free range during the day, which is why they're interacting in this video. And then at night they get shut into their shed and their little insulated house. They have like a moving blanket that acts as a curtain back there for them to push in through and it helps keep some of the heat inside. It's kind of like a dog house, but it's a bigger hog house and they love it. And if we ever get more livestock, which would 5,000% be years and years down the line, I think like if anything, we would get a small chicken coop first, but I'm not even thinking about adopting more pets right now because I have a baby on the way and that's enough to worry about. But if we ever did get more animals, we would extend this pen because we actually have a lot more of the metal roof panels and we could use that as fencing. I'm big into upcycling if you haven't already noticed. I don't really care that it looks the way that it does because it's free. Fencing is expensive, honey, and I don't do electric fences. Lesson number nine is tell someone the story. It will have less power then. And I think that this is a good reminder if you're going through something in your life or if you're replaying old traumatic events, just opening up to somebody in your life sometimes helps so much with clearing your mind of just going through and replaying the events and really torturing yourself. So I highly suggest. Okay, let me flip the camera around and I'll show you what we're working with over here. Welcome to our backyard. So this area behind me, I really feel like if anything, we would designate to pasture for future other animals that live with us here. But at the moment, it's just lawn mowed, maintained. Why not keep it that way for right now? And that's pretty much our only plan with it. We did talk about possibly putting the barn back here instead, but I don't know if we'll really end up doing that because I do find it very convenient, especially if we get a tractor to store the tractor in the barn and be able to, you know, go off of the gravel road and just drive it right in and having it right off the driveway just makes more sense in my brain. Lesson number 10 is get comfortable with saying, let me think about it. <laughs> I am totally the type of person who will literally respond back to a message inviting me to do something like immediately. Or, you know, if I get an offer from a brand or something like that, like I very, very rarely take time to think things over and I make very like rushed decisions. And this works mostly to my benefit. I mean, I haven't up that bad yet. I highly recommend if you're a person who makes rush decisions as well to just start getting more comfortable with saying, hey, let me think about it. Okay. That's where I was going to film, Rue. Okay. This concrete pad right here with rocks on top of it. I have absolutely no idea why this is here. I don't understand what the purpose of this could have been. <laughs> I don't know how it got here. Maybe there was some kind of a shed here at some point or something was stored on this thing. I couldn't tell you, but this is like on the side of our backyard. And right next to me over here, as you can see, is very wild. And um, I kind of love it that it's so wild. Like there's a lot of wildflowers that grow here in the spring and summertime. And we may just kind of keep it as this more wild area or clear out some of these fallen trees and stumps and things that are here and just make it more I don't know, accessible. All right, before I take you back into the woods back here, I just wanna share lesson number 11, which is be aware of what you share. And this is always a good lesson for me, especially now bringing a baby into the world and everything like that and being an online person. But also I think that it's a good lesson for really anybody because sometimes you share stuff, especially in like this very big age of social media and like public filming, I feel like has become very, very common. I don't know, like I care way more about that stuff now than I used to. And I think that privacy is like a wonderful thing to have as well, being on the internet. I, you know, try to keep some parts of my life private, although I am a very uh, vulnerable person when it comes to sharing, I share a lot. And I also love to talk, so I share some great detail. But just in the past few years, I've been trying to like, reel it in a little bit and be like, why did I feel the need to even say that? Like, you guys don't need to know when I go to the bathroom. Like, that's just not something that really needs to be shared. 
That's obviously a funny example, but you know what I mean. Like there's some things where it's just like, maybe we just leave it there. Are you ready to go back inside, Rue? Or do you want to walk into the woods with me? Cause we got a long way to go. Okay, this down here is the start of our trail system that used to be functional, but is no longer. So apparently there was like a gravel kind of maintained trail through the back acreage and woods back here at some point in time but it has not been maintained for so long that like trees have fallen on it and it's just kind of harder to navigate but we did start slowly chainsawing apart this giant tree that collapsed here <laughs> and it's just a large project and it's going to take some man muscle and maybe some neighborly love and help to get us to move all of this <laughs> to the side there were some really big storms in vermont last summer so a lot of the trees um, have now fallen which we'll see as we get farther back into the woods and such but our dream is to basically maintain this trail system again and have it to where we could just you know walk through our property with ease but right now we're just kind of bushwhacking kind of wandering and just going with that but that is the plan and once we get the gravel and the large equipment to help us with that project I feel like it'll be way easier. So Kubota, if you're watching this video, I would love to work with you and <laughs> get on one of your vehicles and move these things around. Lesson number 12 is if you don't allow your body to rest, your body will force you to rest. There were multiple times in the past year when I hurt myself because I was pushing myself too hard, whether it was through too many exercise classes and just overexertion in that area, you know, six days a week, not allowing myself to not take a couple of days off of that every now and again. And yeah, I got injured two separate times because of that, because I refused to let my body rest. So now I'm a chronic rester, honey. Me and this baby, we walk a mile a day. But other than that, I'm definitely not doing active cardio six days a week at this time in my life. But maybe at some other point, I'll learn the balance. Only time will tell. All right, back here is honestly one of the areas that I fell in love with when we first toured this property. And there's just a couple of different locations that I wanna show you. I mean, the land in general is like really just so magical to me. I feel like there's so much room for potential and just for our future family to grow here and be able to play in these woods makes my heart sing. So I just wanted to say that. But right over here, there's like an old dog house. It's in a very decrepit state and covered with moss. Or maybe it was a bridge or something like that, but it looks like a dog house. It looks like a little gable roof. And I just find that very cute. The previous owner had a lot, a lot of black labs. He lived here for probably like 40 years or something like that. And he told us that he had 17 dogs who lived at this house who would kind of frolic all through here. And now our dogs get to enjoy it as well, which is very cute. They actually both went inside because they were so cold. Number 13 is kind of more body focused. I feel like I always have something relating to my body in these lessons learned videos, but wanting to grow is more important than wanting to shrink. Just remind yourself that, especially if you're getting heavily into some kind of a like weight loss regimen or you know a new diet plan or something like focused on wanting to shrink, really. Um, I've been through many phases in my life where that's been relevant to me. And now in pregnancy, I'm literally growing multiple sizes <laughs> throughout the months. And instead of holding so much onto, I guess, a shrunken version of me, I'm just stepping into this new phase of wanting to grow and expand to be the best version of myself and really focus more on that. Now let's go over here. I lied, I'm actually making a pit stop on the way to film next to this lovely little mushroom tree that I love so much. It's just a nice tree, okay? And lesson number 14 is vulnerability isn't telling everyone how someone else harmed you, it's admitting how you harmed someone else. I feel like that's another one of those lessons for me that just doesn't really need much explanation. All right, now I am underneath the previous owner's hunting stand, I believe. Or maybe it was a tree house, but 
I have to believe that it was a hunting stand because, well, he told me that he liked to hunt, so <laughs> that's how I know. Yeah, I don't know what we'll end up doing with this area now. There's like a really big, actually two downed trees that have giant root balls exposed back here as well that we can maybe work with. And there's a ton of slate rock unearthed. And I just find this area very cool. I feel like I can understand why he wanted to spend a ton of time back here. Maybe we'll end up kind of expanding on that and making it a more secure treehouse for kids or something to play in. Lesson number 15 is a Willie Carlisle quote from one of his songs. He had us do a call and response with this line at his concert when we saw him. Watching everybody's faces light up with joy as they screamed this was so beautiful to me. So if you need to hear this today, this is for you. Lord knows I've done some dumb shit and I plan to do some more, but I won't be afraid anymore. And then everybody was just like, had their hands on each other's shoulders and they were like, I won't be afraid anymore. It was so beautiful. So I had to write down that lesson because I think we've all done some dumb shit in our day. I mean, half of mine was probably filmed for the internet, but I'm not afraid to do dumb shit anymore. I feel like now at 27, I have the guts to be like, I'm a human, I make mistakes, but I have the foresight as well as the uh, humility <laughs> at times to be like, yeah, that was a good idea, or no, that was not a good idea, and that was maybe a little bit of a mistake in reflections with myself or my loved ones and stuff like that. But either way, I'm not afraid anymore. All right. Let me take you to our rock wall. All right, I had to switch my battery, so I also switched my jacket when I went back into the house, and I had a snack break. So I'm feeling good and ready to show you this rock wall behind me. It is massive. If you guys are into outdoor bouldering, I mean, just look at the sheer size of this thing. It goes on way farther over there as well. Get some mats out here in the summertime when I'm not pregnant and I can work out again, get to climbing and just get crazy. I mean, I feel good about this wall. This is one of the things on the property tour when Finley and I were walking around where we were just like, how did we not know that this was here? We had a lot of surprise in store for us. And as nature lovers, we were very excited to come across this. So I had to share it with you. Lesson number 16 is kind of a mantra for me, at least at the moment. I am comfortable in my own skin. I accept my body exactly how it is. All right, I'm not sure how many of you were able to tell this when I was just filming in front of the rock wall, but I'm basically filming in front of like a big drainage gully at the moment. And when all of the snow melts, this is where it goes and drains off to. Or when we have our big rain season, this is where it goes. And it just goes down, down the hill. And so directing as much water runoff as we can to here would be preferred because there are some weird diversion patterns happening on like the upper part of our land near our driveway and our house and where the pigs are. And we just can't have those areas getting flooded if we do have a rain season as bad as we did in 2023. So we just need to figure out some good ways to drain everything out. And lesson number 17 is almost like a parenting lesson. Honestly, I think I read this in a parenting book, but you can kind of take this outside of parenting as well. But misbehavior is a way of asking for more responsibility. When I heard this lesson, I just thought it was so funny to kind of like relate to myself, like the ways I misbehave in my own life and how I should just give myself a little bit more to do if I'm misbehaving, you know? But also with raising toddlers and nannying toddlers and thinking back to that time where, you know, I had moments where I was like, wow, this kid is really acting out. What did I do? I just gave him another job. And sometimes it's frustrating and it takes a lot longer to finish a job if you're having a toddler help you. But a lot of the time, you know, if they're off doing something or destroying something, it's worse than if they were to help you. And I know I don't have a toddler in my life right now and I'm not trying to give you parenting advice when my little one is still in the womb. I'm just saying this is not just a lesson for parenting but also for your own lives because I found it relevant to me. Okay, let's go find some quartz in the woods. I think I know a couple of places I could show you. Also, while I'm here, I just wanted to say our property goes pretty far that way, pretty far 
that way and very far this way. So there's a lot of areas still to show you. <laughs> For all my crystal heads out there. Do you see how freaking far this quartz piece goes? It starts here on this ridge and it goes all the way over here. Oh, oh my god. Imagine just living your life as a damn ass rock. We have to find a way to excavate the earth and unearth this thing a little bit just to show it off. I just want to give her her full glory. So we'll see if we ever end up doing that. But lesson number 18 is being alive is hard work. It's okay to feel like you've earned a rest. I'm resting right now on this beautiful quartz. I feel like one of the biggest lessons that I've been kind of harping on in recent vlogs and stuff is that my life and routine lately is a little bit mundane, but it's restful and it's nice and it's what I need in this season of life. And I hope that it's been, you know, of service to you to watch and grant yourself a little rest or sometimes motivation. Sometimes I make content like that too. But right now I feel like just a season of rest is upon me, especially being in the third trimester and being a giant woman. All right, let me flip you around. I love these woods. I really do love this part of the woods. It's so magnificent. And as you can see behind me, maybe, I hope you can tell, there's a little bit of a like moss rock wall over here. So there's a big kind of up and down divide, which I love. I love a little bit of diversity in my land, baby. You know, give me the high highs, give me the low lows. I can see my house from here, but I can also see some beautiful moss. I see this gorgeous mushroom tree. What more could I need? Lesson number 19, my friend Viv shared recently on her Instagram story. And I was just like, oh my God, this is speaking to me. I feel like so many of us kind of have things that are heavy on our hearts that we wish we could change when it comes to the world. So maybe this would be a nice reminder for you. Instead of insulating myself from the stresses of the world, I will rise to meet the world as is. There's a dog howling in the distance, so I'm gonna move along. I might be on his land. Just kidding, this is my land, but this is my land. <laughs> Start shaking my damn fist at the dog. I literally don't know what direction the dog barking is coming in, but I'm gonna walk this way and show you a couple more things, okay? Let that last lesson resonate with you while I walk. Sorry for any barking you may hear in the background. We live in the country. There are dogs. There are also culverts that have been left behind. You know, fun fact about me, I used to accidentally call culverts cadavers. I don't even know how I got the two mixed up. It's truly crazy to me. A couple of these were left behind because we are approaching pond territory. So it's very swampy around here. And I believe the previous owner, you know, tried to do some water diversion into another gully that's over here and create kind of like a river to usher some of the water from the pond out. And he brought these culverts down here and left them down here. But we need to bring these up to our driveway because our driveway needs them pretty bad with just diverting the water away from the driveway. So we have no more gravel washout. Lesson number 20 is to get comfortable accepting not everyone will like it. <laughs> Whatever your clothes are, your makeup, your personality, your house, or whatever choice you make, not everyone's gonna like it, but you just need to be content in yourself. So that's something that's been really relevant for me in the past year, especially with purchasing this property. There are some people who just get really riled up in my comment section sometimes about our home and how they don't like the house. And I'm like, well, thank God that we bought this house and you didn't right? Not everybody is going to like it, but we love it. And I'm so happy that we're in the place that we are in making our home what it is and what it's going to be. And I'm sure our minds will change 5,000 times about what the vision is or what projects we want to do, whether it's culvert work or painting a, a wall yellow or not, you know, <laughs> but at the end of the day, it's our choice to make and you don't have to like it. But either way, I probably will share most of the process with you. So it's just a nice reminder, this lesson for me, of just having that go over and over in my head. Like I chose these decisions because I wanted to make them and I don't have to go back on any of my decisions because one sad person on the internet is like, actually. But now it's time to show you my most favorite part of this land. And I hope that it'll be your favorite too. But at the end of the day, you don't have to like it. 
Here we are, folks. Welcome to the big pond. I'm saying big pond because this is the bigger one on our property. We do have a littler one that I will take you to in a second, but oh my God. Again, had no idea that there was a pond on this property when we first came to tour it. And when we found it, we were like, holy shit, the opportunities are endless with this thing, okay? I have filmed down here before a couple of times, but it's just, it's so much bigger in person. And in a couple of months, once this bad boy thaws out a little bit and it's not as freaking freezing to do so, I'm gonna pump up my inflatable kayak, just take a couple loops in this thing. Why not? Who's stopping me? It's my land, honey. Oh, as a renter for many years. Damn, I love saying that. Lesson number 21 is discipline is the key to structure and routine. I feel like as somebody who didn't go to a traditional college and now works for themselves on the internet, discipline is something that I really, really have to have with myself to maintain any kind of structure and routine in my life and not allow too much slacking, procrastinating, or laziness. There's a time and a place for that and a time and a place to get you grind on, honey. Now, I wanna show you our land bridge. Isn't this so cool? It connects the big pond on this side to the gully where the drainage is and then runs all the way through. It was once graveled so that you could put like, you know, a farm vehicle on this, an ATV or take your truck down here or something like that. And hopefully we'll be able to get it back into enough shape where that would be the case again. I really like the idea of a land bridge. I think they're just amazing. So just kind of hiking this up a little bit so that it doesn't get flooded out if we have any flooding like 2023 again, then that would be great. And then over here, can you see it? You can see a little bit of it. There's also an old wood bridge that used to be there. It almost looks like a dock. <laughs> Maybe that was another part of the deck that he brought down here. You never know. Now, before I take you a little further back here into the woods, I'm gonna share with you a lesson while I'm on this land bridge. And these are actually Finley's lyrics that he wrote to a song that's called The Center of the Circle, but I don't know if it'll ever come out. And the cadence of the song is kind of like spoken word poetry. And this part of it really resonates with me. Oh my God. Did you guys just see that bird? That was a beautiful bird. You don't need to search for purpose when it's in front of your face, underfoot and understood in all the steps you undertake. I feel like I've spent a lot of my life searching for purpose and you don't really need to do that all the time. Your life is your purpose. Making people happy can be your purpose. Accomplishing your silly little tasks throughout the day can be your purpose. I'm not here to tell you what your purpose in the world is, but I feel like the never ending search for it is kind of torturous, you know what I mean? So sometimes that lesson is just a good reminder for me. All right, let's go farther back. You guys may be looking at me in this area just being like, well, it's just more woods. What's so special about it? But this area feels a lot more open than our other wooded parts of the property. And it's just more spacious because this area is kind of less hilly and more cleared. We could put something down here if we wanted to build, I don't know what we would want to build, but the options are endless. Speaking of endless options, <laughs> number 23 is the ability to pivot will identify passion for what you truly care about. I've been loving this idea of just having the ability to pivot out of something if I don't want to be doing it anymore because right now I'm wearing a couple of different hats and I'm trying to tie up a lot of loose ends on some projects that I have just never finished and I pivoted to something else <laughs> and I'm allowing myself this space to just like define what I'm passionate about just in a day-to-day -day sense. And sometimes it's frustrating for my little head when I wanna complete something, but I know that I will one day. They just come back to you with time, but pivoting away from them and giving them the space to grow and then coming back, that's fine too. I'm gonna take you guys back up this way and we're gonna go find the little pond. This is another part of our property where when it works, it works and you can walk through it. But when it's flooded, it is not manageable. So we need to either get some gravel down here or figure out a way to divert some of the water. But in the summer, it's completely covered in ferns. So we call it the fern gully. <laughs> but having a trail system that would be navigated by a little wooden sign, like an Animal Crossing, that's like the signpost going in different directions. Like 
this way to the fern gully, this way to the rock wall, this way to the big pond. Like, oh my God, a custom sign in my future. I think about it all the time. I really do love this place. So I would just really enjoy being able to casually stroll through here and not feel like I gotta put on my muck boots to do so. Lesson number 24 is something that Finley told me this morning and I was writing down some of these later lessons and I was like, damn, that is good. He said, it's best for me if I hold myself to a high standard and give everyone else a break versus holding everybody else to a high standard and giving myself a break. It's an interesting thing to think about and I really loved that lesson today. So I wanted to share it with you as well. Okay, let's actually go find the little pond. This is just the way there. My neighbor's dog is absolutely livid that I'm here right now. So I'm gonna make this quick. This is our little pond. Let me step aside so you can see. She's gorgeous. She's actually more of like a toad pond, frog pond, because there's a lot of tadpoles that breed in here. And we actually have a little frog house that we got at like a Renaissance fair years and years ago, where it encourages frogs to go in there and house themselves and have a little cover. And I can't wait to put that out down here when their season comes. It's definitely not the season now. It's still very frozen on top. And like I mentioned earlier, we're going to get more snow tonight. But let me share a quick lesson with you guys before I head back up the hill because this dog's pissed. Oh my God, this is one of my favorite lessons. What will you miss from the other side? And when I say the other side, I mean the other side of existence. And I know that could be a little bit out there for some of you, a little bit woo woo, but I have been obsessed with this song by Casey Musgraves called Dinner with Friends on her new album. And she just highlights all of the little miracles on a day-to-day -day basis that happen in her life that she would miss from the other side. And I'm not kidding when I say that literally every single time I listen to it, I weep tears of joy because <laughs> there's so much that I would miss from the other side. And it is like really a practice of gratitude to notice those things throughout your daily existence. But life is such a gift. Just, that's all I'm saying. Okay, we gotta get out of here. <laughs> all right, I'm gonna sit backwards in this chair because the back legs of it are like really dug into the earth from many years of it living here. And I don't wanna move it, okay? This is a good chair to sit in to get a little perspective of the land. In reality, I bet that this is here for hunting purposes, but I don't use it as such. <laughs> it sits just at the top of the hill at the back of our yard, like looking down into the woods, and it's very cute. So right here, I wanted to share with you lesson number 26, which is the best expectation is to have none. This is an amazing lesson for me with renovating this house. I have absolutely no expectations. I have loose plans of how I want things to go, but with the ability to pivot that I've developed, my adjustment to massive change in my life, and just like having no timeline, oh, it's starting to snow. I just feel like those are kind of big strong suits in the chaos of renovation. And those of you who are renovating houses, you probably really understand this. There are so many things that come up when you're doing one specific construction project in your home that maybe you didn't anticipate, especially in old construction like this house is. So just having no expectations at all is honestly a much better mindset for me to adapt to and live by rather than being like, okay, in these three months, we're gonna do this. And then in the next year, we're gonna do this. And it's like, those are all good and fine to have is like loose ideas but if you hold too much on to something it just leads to disappointment holy hell i didn't think it would snow at this hour so i'm gonna need to move back up to the house to do the last lesson all right i figured we'd end off kind of in the area where i started i started over by that white rock talking about garden and orchard plans the garden going more over here i forgot to get into more depth on this but we're gonna do raised beds obviously because we have free-ranging hogs for a lot of the day and honestly just because i feel like they would be more manageable having experimented with a ton of in-ground planting i'm ready to try raised beds <laughs> and i want to say for this area land management wise we do want to kind of wall this off a little bit, not only to make it more aesthetically pleasing and not just look like a big pile of dirt, but we also need to kind of move things around and excavate. So again, Kubota, I'm looking at you, honey. Imagine me driving around a little Kubota. I would just be so cute in that thing. Anyway, in hopes of not sounding too desperate, I'm gonna move on to the last lesson. And that is take a second 
to stop and look around. And right now, when I'm looking around, I'm just like, holy shit, we live here. You know what I mean? I'm seeing the ridges in the distance of the Vermont hills and our beautiful house that I can't wait to work more on the exterior of. But I just can't believe that we live here and that this house is ours and this land is ours to make memories on and do whatever projects we want on and have our family be raised here and have our animals live here and frolic. Like all of it is just so magical to me and there's just so much possibility and that's like the one feeling that was just emanating from our first time visiting here. When we got back in the car, we were just like, oh my God, in the pond and the rock walls and all of the things that we could do to the land with like the trail system and just having it be like a beautiful space to kind of be able to be one with nature. I'm watching a crow fly overhead right now. Oh my God. A bunch of little birds. Okay, the snow is coming down, so the birds are all like, <laughs> I gotta head back to my nest, okay? And I do as well. I'm talking way too much. This video was probably like 45 hours long, but I just wanted to share all of my 27 lessons that I've learned at 27 with you. And thank you in advance for the birthday wishes on this video. I can't believe I'm 27. What's the Casey Musgrave lyric? She's like, when I turn 27, everything started to change <laughs> and that's how i feel right now entering motherhood in just a few short months honestly weeks actually because i'm 30 weeks so it's really just like a countdown at this point until baby comes but um thank you so much for watching i feel very humbled to be able to share this with you and it's an honor to be able to live where we do i'm getting teary-eyed <laughs> because this wouldn't be possible without you. So, love you very much. I'm gonna go take my pregnancy hormone ass inside, but I hope you have a lovely rest of your day or night whenever you're watching this. When I'm not on here, you can find me on Patreon and I will just see you guys in my next video. Stay smiling, bye y'all.